Hello and welcome back to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spanch and hey, <laughs> it works. I'm still getting errors in the console every five seconds. Um, every time I boot the game, in fairness, not every five seconds. I am exaggerating. Uh, but I boot the game up and get an error, but it doesn't matter. I've managed to get access to my blueprints library finally. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I managed it, but essentially on the forum post I described what I did. It was just essentially messing around with the folders in the back end to the point where I think I just just broke Steam and confused the living bejesus out of it to the point where I just gave up. That's the plan. Okay, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Faction Headquarters. Um, experiencing some, some frame loss because somebody, Miss Box, is parked. I don't know who it is, Miss Box, but I'm not going to name names, Miss Box. It's parked the freaking Helios at the headquarters. Uh, but there we go. <laughs> I parked my Matter S there, but it's like size 3. What do you want? Um, today is a wonderful day because we get to... We get to see our brand spanking new capital vessel uh, brought into the world and then kitted out and equipped. Bloody hell, the spawn distance on this is massive. Like, it's all the way over there. It's like spawns it 3 kilometers away. Brilliant. Um, we're going to kick this out. This is the Scavenger Alliance Jupiter dropship. And this is going to be our main ship now for the foreseeable future. As we partake in the Scavenger Alliance. This thing is pretty big. It's not the biggest ship I built, but it is pretty big. And it's big enough to service, house and service, several SVs, HVs, and even small CVs as well. Uh, so... Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one to, to... I've never, like, survived or thrived with the Jupiter before. So this will be a first in every way. Um, here she is. There's a massive build. I, I should probably get some fuel and stuff in here. I'm not sure if I'm still in range of the of the, uh, the HQ. I have now... Oh, no, I'm not. I have now unloaded uh, everything from the Matarist into the headquarters and the Matarist has been disembarked and is ready for uh is, is ready for mothballing <laughs> or sale uh not mothballing sorry sale ready to be sold which is such a shame he's done so well an absolute beast that ship has been all the way through uh this playthrough so far we must say goodbye and we must move on uh the bigger, better, mightier vessels. There we go. Fuel that up. Um, chuck 300 oxygen in there. Fill the pentaxid tank. And our next task will be to fill the ammunition controllers. Because this thing has got a bristling array of um, bolter turrets, sentinel flak weapons, gatling guns, sentry guns. It's, um... It's it's all sort of anti-drone, anti kind of small vessel, I suppose, uh, weaponry. There's nothing like anti-ship stuff on this on this thing. Uh, it is a dropship. It's not a battleship. It's supposed to protect what is inside it, not go to war necessarily. So uh, here it is. Uh, the Jupiter I designed it basically is a freaking hollow tube. Uh, from from one end to the other, you can fly straight through it, and in the middle is kind of like you know our parking and repair and service area. And now this thing here, if I flip it a right switch, drop a doors, so we can hover the ship and launch tanks out the bottom of it, just for the giggles. <laughs> just fling tanks out the bottom of it. There you go. <laughs> throw that at a base. The other thing that we might s see if we can do with that is um, if we set up like a heavy artillery cannon uh, platform above that bay door and just hover above a POI just out of range and fling EMP shots at its shield, we might be able to down shields from upon high. Uh, and that, that, that could be an interesting method of taking down some POIs. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens and what we do throughout our uh, playthrough now with the Jupiter. Um, but yeah, she's a big boat. She's a big boat. Now, most of it we don't need to go into. Obviously, the hangar bay we'll go into. Obviously, we need to grab a vehicle and go and kill something. Um, but back there, we're probably just going to fly into and then park somewhere. 
This is where we'll be spending most of our time at the front forward section here among the crew generally chit chatting and not really doing much work. Yeah, talking to you two. I don't even know your names, whatever. Uh, Gerald? Right, so this is the bridge, the primary bridge. I suppose there are two bridges on the Jupiter. This is just one of them and we've got some pretty good views from within here. The visibility is um, right although I've missed a bit of texturing this is a disaster I must uninstall the game immediately and reconsider my life um that's just embarrassing yes I know Gerald I know can't all get it right like you all the time can we <laughs> yes that was a joke right um we got meds we got constructors and we've got hydroponics down here now, I'm tempted to just fill this up with pentaxid, to be honest, and um, we can live off the farms in the station. I don't know. Obviously, we're going to work out of this space, but obviously a base is... You have to keep coming back to, so... <laughs> Long-term missions and stuff away from the headquarters. It is good to have some food, but I don't know. Yeah, we just stock up on bloody lots and lots of dino stew. We should be fine. Or ration packs or whatever. Um, and yeah, we got like fridges and armor lockers and stuff sort of spread out around putting the walls. I don't think I put a repair station in this thing. Ooh, error. Yeah, I should have put one in here instead of this box. It should be in the ceiling. Nay, I've got armor and mods up there instead. Sorry, excuse me, chaps. Um, Dave. Uh, that's it. That's it. Now we got quite a few boxes in here we've got everything from well everything up here i think is all 320 ksu containers uh we've got two loot boxes the input for some reason is only 312 that was obviously a something probably went wrong in a symmetry mode with that damn it missed that hv ammo we've got ammo boxes for the various vehicles that we look after in, in spare ammo for the cv as well as the ammo box itself uh, now if I connect to nothing because I'm out of range uh, but I have pre-prepared all the ammunition for this and hopefully we can just chuck that in and off we go uh, there is also an upstairs area I need I, I want to show you and um, it's gonna head up there now but I'm going to edit this in a seamless way so I can get around this server restart but you're not even gonna notice anything's happened <laughs> see told you Yes, yeah, so upstairs we've got uh, a corridor. That's great. And this is our second bridge here. So, top deck bridge. I don't know in case we park on the top deck and we want to quickly go and do something. Um, and then in here we've got, actually weirdly, the engineering section, which is on top of the ship, uh, where we've got our fuel tanks. We've got a big honky generator. Uh, space for another big honky generator. Um, lots and lots of fuel, and then we got our warp drive here, CPU stuff off to the left, and uh, this is the rear engineering section where we got the computer core, and so on and so forth, and and then another cockpit at the rear here, and for some reason I've run out of gravity, may have miscalculated the gravity generator's range for some reason, uh, where we can pilot um, the ship backwards, but no, more than that, we can actually control tool turret at the back here oh yeah <laughs> so there we go I don't know what happened to the gravity maybe uh, vanilla gravity generators have a larger range than reforging ones I don't know but uh, yeah there we go that is the Jupiter dropship and uh, because it's a vanilla build I expect it to have quite a few problems <laughs> uh, although I retrofitted it for reforged yeah, it's a vanilla build. <laughs> I've done my best to retrofit it for Reforged, but it is not a Reforged build. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I expect some problems. Okay, let's maneuver this thing into next to the station so that we can actually use the Wi-Fi and, and fill its boxes with various things and such. Um, and I'm going to get ask someone very nicely to come and take the matter rest away. And uh, try and find someone to, to throw you home. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. We need to actually go underneath because I need to be nearer the big storage bay at the bottom of the station here. 
This thing maneuvers really fast. Got a lot of thrustage in the left and the right, but then it is dry weight at the moment, so take that with a pinch of salt. Okay, so here's one of our storage bays. It has a lot of stuff. We have a CV ammo box here, and we have the ammo box on the Jupiter here. And we need sentinel flat cannons, we need 15 mils, and we need colonist bolter and missile rounds. I'm just going to fill this up with as much of this as it can take. Colonist bolter sentinels. And we probably, oh, we need 5.8 as well for the sentry guns. That's a lot of bolter rounds. I don't really make that many bolter rounds. Oops. Um, you know, a lot of bolter rounds. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's everything. Bolters, 14,000, 19,000, 15 mils, 5,000 sentinel flak 7000 missiles and 8000 rounds of sentry ammo there we go that should keep us going for a little while at least anyway it's all very light and all very cheap to make so um now there is something with the bolter ammo being kind of useless against anything moving so we'll um we'll maybe keep an eye on that um the other thing is that we're about 2400 over we have a few more crew members to uh, add, and that will get us back to 100% CPU. And she can add these guys upstairs. Seems to be the best place to kind of blend them in with the background, as it were, you know? And then the front section, I've kind of used every space for crew. There we go. So that should get us. Yeah, so get that 100%. We have also got quantum core um there she is a quantum cpu extender uh now i could add that onto the jupiter and increase a shield capacity quite remarkably uh, and again i'm not quite sure how we've managed to do this but we've got twenty thousand shields on this boat Twenty thousand, seven seven five, which is about what the matterist had i think the matterist maybe had twenty four thousand, but there are no large capacitors here <laughs> They're all the small ones. Two chargers at four capacitors. 20,000 shield. I don't understand how I've done that. Um, I, should, I I think this probably takes a longer time to charge because it's only got two chargers. And um, because it's only got two chargers, these capacitors actually add up to more. Uh, so it just means that these this takes a longer time to build up. But there we are. Uh, if it comes to it, we we have got space... Although it would take some creative thinking, I think, to get more than one. I've obviously got the generator space, but I want to leave that for a generator. Now, for the small chargers and capacitors, the two by ones, that's no problem. We've got loads of pipes and stuff everywhere that we can replace um, to get around that. Now, it's the bigger ones. It's a three by friggin' five or whatever it is. Those ones will take a little bit more of a creative approach to, to fit somewhere. Uh, because, as you can see, kind of everywhere is chock a block with bloody thrusters or generators uh, and so on and so forth so we might have to eat into like hangar space or something I don't know but yeah uh, I'll think about it might be able to cram it in there maybe get rid of that pipes and that bit get one in there yeah so but at the moment 20,000 shields for a non-combat ship is pretty good it's pretty good so we'll I'll happily accept that Okay, so we got ammo on board. We got we got um, fuel and O2 and stuff like that. What we need to do now is sort of fill the input box up, put some stuff in the fridge, transfer as well. I need to transfer the scorpion um, and the charger from the Matterest and park them on the Jupiter here. I also want to look at bringing in the Razorback as well, which is my other slightly more powerful tank with much more pew pew than the old Scorpion. And um, there is an SV that I've been working on that I'm keen to show you as well, but it's not quite ready yet. That will be coming soon. And we're going to try and focus on um, small vehicle combat rather than big ship combat uh, when it comes to doing sort of combat -y stuff. And um, that is going to require some new builds of mine or some updates of some old ones at least anyway okay uh let me f do some musical chairs with the ships and put some final supplies in here and then we're going to set sail if that's the term with starships into the great beyond we're going to be heading towards 
drone space, which is that way. And we need to you really up the amount of drone processors that we have so we can create some more auxiliary cores. With those auxiliary cores, we can bring in some of the uh, the SVs and tanks and stuff uh, that I want to bring in that just have ooh, the firepower that we're going to need. It's kind of a, a chicken of the egg situation because I kind of need them to take the drones on, but I don't have them yet. <laughs> we'll see how we get on without them. Okay, we are embarking. We are embarking. We're ready to go. Actually, it took a really long time. <laughs> but we are set. We have some food, resources, and stuff that we'll need on our journey. Now, we're still sort of exploring B-type stars. The drone lands is the general direction that we're heading in. Um, but this is the great thing about the Three Sisters area is you have basically A's, F's, and G's right on your doorstep. To the right of that, you've got G's, K's, and M's. And then over to the left side, you've got all the B's, A's, and WR1s, WR2s. So you've actually got like all the star types like in one place. The only thing that's missing, obviously, is like the rarer stuff like the uh, R's, the black holes, um, the K5s and random stuff like that. But there are a few K's over here as well, I think. Uh, yeah, K's and stuff. So, you know, the point is that you know the main star types are all basically within a single jump distance is brilliant okay so uh let's just pick a b type star and um there we go we're off ladies and gentlemen that's the scavenger alliance headquarters and we'll be operating out of that from now on but uh we're going to go on various expeditions as we head towards the drone lands now, I'm also going to continue to uh, explore the general area and anything of kind of interest to planet systems that I've never been to before, I'm going to be exploring. Um, so to that effect, I found a burnt desert. Now, around this burnt desert planet is also a crystalline moon with a red... And now, I've seen crystalline moons with purple uh, icons before, not red. So I'm curious about that as well. There's toxic moon, lava moon, crystalline moon, and then desert burnt here. And um, we're going to pop down and have a little look on that. It's undiscovered as well. So I'll be the first player to find this burnt desert and what secrets may lie upon it. We shall see. Um, yeah, the star looks pretty awesome. <laughs> We're up to O-type stars now. I'm in the same, same little cluster. Um, nothing particularly of interest on the B-types that we found. But um, we'll get the O's here as well. There's another one down. Oh, that's B. What am I talking about? Uh, why am I a B-type star? I need an O-type stars. Well, I found a B-type star because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I thought the O's were here as well. Oh, no. They're B's and A's and B's. Not O's and A's and B's and C's and O. We'll find some O's. We'll find some O's. But let's check out this burnt, burnt place. Why is it burnt? And uh, that looks like water to me. Let's check it out. Jupiter's first planet fall. And we've got a... Caledon Ink Fabrication of the Colonist Excavation Site as well. Pretty sure that's um, where we can get ancient relics there. Large silicon. Loads of colonist stuff around here, actually. That seems to be it. Doesn't seem to be any, like... Well, I mean... You know. <laughs> tiny part of the planet. Let's check out these... Um, this uh, fabrication place here, this sounds interesting. It might be a trade opportunity. Oh, hello. They got a big old mechie do dude, haven't they? Hello, chaps. Why is gravity here? Seems, seems high. Three Gs. Okay, so you're just the normal trading quartermaster. Okay, no problem. Um, What else have we got here? Looks like it could be... Well, I mean, like I said, it, yeah, hopefully it's a... Oh, another faction. Can't go in there. Yeah, all the LCDs are in there. Done. Um, Alright, what else we got? Ah, here we go. Nonlinear Productions. NLP. Most commonly known. I'm the foreman of the entire planet. As you can see, this place we handle manufacturing warp drives, mining equipment, and fusion reactors. I'm not taking any more orders at this time due to material shortage. Sorry, pal. Pirates keep hitting our shipments. Need help? Alright, so we make big stuff here. We're not so good with little things, so we need to get them shipped in. Problem is that we're running low on regulators. Need a shipment of t or, or, or 10 to keep working at the current pace. You can work out a deal for 400 energy regulators 
we can work out a reward for you. The boys are too busy to unload your ship, so you'll need transportation boosters to bring them inside yourself. They're pretty heavy. I'll see what I can do. 400 energy regulators. Okay, I left most of the kind of um, sort of materials at the HQ. I, of course, brought with me uh, a number of ores and stuff like that. I can probably manufacture 400 energy regulators. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. There's another trader in there. There is actually. Hang on. Ow. One second. Oh, this vendor market cafe. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, let's see what are you what are you looking for at the moment as well? What is it? Uh huh. Blue pepper. Three of them. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Three blue peppers. Well, I brought five with me because there was three at the HQ. One of the faction mates brought, so we can definitely do that one as well. Three Gs of gravity on this planet, and the cloud miner is like, what? We what? We don't even give a damn. That's what. Right. So, uh, the peppers, I can get 400 regulators, though. That's going to take a little bit of manufacturing, but I think I can do it. Basically, just fly down the entirety of the ship here. Park near the front door, because I'm going to be in and out using the cloud miner here. Now, the other thing that he said is, as well, we need transportation boosts in order to move uh, said stuff. And obviously it being three Gs of gravity as well. <laughs> that makes sense. Sure. Uh, okay, let's get the constructor started on those energy regulators. Hopefully we can manufacture 400 of the bastards. Um, like I said, I brought kind of the basics because essentially when I, when I find a base, I offload. I then try and refill the, uh, the things with... Um, as much naturally occurring stuff as I can get. There we go. 400, yeah? Let's get you running 200. And let's get the other guy running 200 as well. Turn the constructors on. And uh, off they go. That'll take them a little while to get through that. Um, in the meantime, armor and boosts. Armor and mods. I've got my durable heavy. Um, I think I left all the mods transportation mods and stuff <sighs> damn it yeah I left them all at the HQ these are the ones out of the armor locker of the matter rest not the rest of them it means I'm going to need to go back to the HQ anyway uh, right fine okay I may as well pick up the regulators that are there then as well I have to go back anyway um I wonder if I could teleport back. You grab the... Yeah, let me put on the heavy armor. Teleport back, grab the energy regulators and come back again. And whatever mods I can grab as well. Oh wait, the teleporter on a ship only goes to orbits, doesn't it? Nothing with a friendly teleporter in range of the ship. That's outrageous. That's unreal. Okay, fine. We will go back to the HQ, pick up those regulators, pick up transportation boosts, and everything else that we're going to need. All right, back to the HQ. We got 400 regulators there, so um, yeah, that's at least sorted. Now, I realize as well that there's a huge number of problems on the Jupiter, which is another reason I haven't published it to the workshop yet as of this episode, because there's a lot of things I need to figure out. For example, didn't have a long-range radar. Let's go back and put that on. That tipped us back over CPU. We're now at 97% CPU at uh, 2.134 million. I also noticed on the way back to base that our maximum warp jump was actually 44 light years. And that's because we've got a standard warp drive in here. Ugh. What? Why have I got a standard warp drive in here? That's disgusting. But yes, that's a standard warp drive. That's hideous. And that needs to go. Which basically means that we're going to be well over 2.1 million CPU. And I'm going to embrace our friend the quantum CPU. Oh yes, we're going to put that in. I'm also going to take the opportunity to upgrade all the GATs to heavy GAT uh, turrets. Uh, in that case, just to give a little bit of extra ground firepower. And um, that should be it, I think. Just new warp drive, upgrade GATs, make some ammunition for them. We've got the uh, tool turret at the back already, that's fine. The only other thing is maybe some ice mining drills as well. But um, let's start with at least the quantum, shall we? So we need the headquarters, blocks and devices. 
Let's take this glass out here and that block out there. And then grab the quantum CPU from you. Slap it to do there. And pop the glass back. And paint it. There we go. We've now got a quantum CPU in. It means our CPU is now up to 2.3 uh, million allowance. Yeah, it's 200,000 extra CPU to play with. Okay, let's get these turrets upgraded. Well, actually, first of all, the warp drive. Bingo. Let's connect into our input box on the headquarters. Should be able to do the same thing with the turrets. Uh, we're just short of a bit of cobalt alloy. Okay, no problem. We can manufacture plenty of cobalt alloy. Bingo, there we go. You get to the front are done. Now there's a bunch on the underside for uh, planetary bombardment. What I'm going to do is get all the, uh, the the normal 15 mil rounds, and let me just make sure I'm not going to be over spending on CPU here. Uh, I think I might be actually might be able to only upgrade a few of these. Yeah. Two, two. We got 50,000 left. But that's that entire bank of GATs upgraded. These are Connors bolters. There's no upgrade to those. Uh, I think that's it then, isn't it? Should tell us because it will say on the ammunition thing. Yeah, AP rounds, the 15 mils have disappeared, or the normal ones, the non AP ones. I don't know what they are anymore. 15 mil, they're 128 mil. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, if anybody knows where to get dual colonist missile launchers let me know i haven't found any yet i'm guessing that we have to get them from actual like colonist or maybe bandit ships i don't know but the ones i've taken so far have always just been the, the standard missile launchers uh anyway these are all sensible flax and colonist bolters are left over here now as well so top ones um i don't know if sentinel flax fire in atmosphere i'm assuming they don't neither the missile launchers the colonist bolters should right these are the questions. Um, I don't know, actually. I might need to sort some of these colonist weapons out for normal gats if they don't fire an atmosphere, otherwise I've got no top deck protection. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. But anyway, there we go. One quantum core in there, and we're up to 2,262,000 uh, of 3.3 million. So we're good. We're back at 100%. Plus we've got um, some extra firepower. Uh, the only other thing, like I said, I need to swap out We'll put in the deconstructor. Eh. I'll just... I'll put these rounds in the storage. Because in the storage, I've got CV ammo. There we go. And uh, I'll get manufacturing some of the armor-piercing stuff now. And then let's get back there with those regulators and those peppers and stuff. And hopefully we can unlock that, uh, that trader and what he sells. Interesting, he creates fusion reactors and stuff. Now, while I'm waiting for the uh, new ammo to manufacture, I was looking at my tech tree here and at unlocking the small auxiliary CPU, which is going to need for some of the uh, larger HVs and SVs that uh, I might want to bring in. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. But then I noticed the recipe for that is 35 salvage drone process. No problem, easy. We're going to go and get those. Uh, one quantum computer. The rest of that is flux cores, power cores, bridges and matrices, gold, aluminium foil. Um, and it adds 500 shield capacity. I didn't know that about small auxiliary CPUs, but uh, this is new. Um, having one, in, not only does it take uh, your CPU requirements down 10,000, it also gives you an extra 500 shield capacity. Very nice. Uh, however, quantum computers now i was curious about that so i looked that up as well and this is one of these new fangled components in here uh this requires 10 computers uh, advanced electronics energy, energy regulators and 10 semiconductors you'll notice is in red at the moment because it doesn't have the materials to make the semiconductors which require silver powder um now we've already discovered silver and we know how to mine it and we know where to find it uh we have to be in enemy territory and um typically on sort of barrenish planets and stuff within enemy territory however you need a crap ton of it <laughs> because its conversion ratio is garbage so <laughs> we have on the jupiter um we have a bit of silver ore worth 446 i can't do anything with that because i need 500 create i think it was, was it like a 100 silver powder or something i can't remember what the um the conversion is um but the point is that 
Yeah. We, uh, once we've got whatever... Ooh, platinum credits. That's cool. High value platinum credit card used, issued by Trade Federation Banking. Each credit represents a total sum of 10,000 credits that can be deposited into an ATM. Oh, sweet. Oh, fantastic. That can absolutely reduce the number of money cards just sitting around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very nice. Thank you, Revian, for that one. Anyway, what was I saying? So, silver powder, yeah. Um, I can't even seem to... Oh, there it is, yeah. So, it's 500 silver ore for 10 silver powder. <laughs> oh, my God. So, that'll make two semiconductors. We need 10. We need 10 semiconductors. So we need... We need um, what was that? 5,000 ore? No, 2,500 ore, I think. Oh my god. <laughs> to make one supercomputer. Or one auxiliary core. Uh, we need more than one auxiliary core. We're going to need like loads. So, yeah. Well, there needs to be a... Uh, uh, a serious and concerted operation for mining silver. Which is... Well, that's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Woohoo! All right, well, there we go. That's, I just thought I'd share that because uh, I was just looking through. I was just looking through this tech tree here. At that thing there. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go all the way down like the crazy weapons and stuff on CVs. Not really what the Scavenger Alliance is all about, but uh, I don't know. That swarm launcher does look pretty tasty. That requires 10 quantum computers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Shit. Okay, take... Technically take three, actually. <laughs> take three of disembarking from the frigging HQ. My god. Okay, well the good news is we got ammo for our new upgraded turrets. We now have a new swanky pantsy... Um, uh, warp drive, and we can probably jump all the way back to Dan to Lath where it's, yeah, 48 later is definitely gonna jump right. <laughs> uh, we could jump right back there and, and we can talk to this guy about these energy regulators and get access to one of these manufacturing plants that we've been hearing so much about. Uh, finally, all right, let's go. All on this, Caldera, oh, it's set a waypoint on the freaking hard, you son of a bean. Uh, I only have 53, but I need 97 to warp. Um, <sighs> the HQ is right there. I could just refill, but I, I have a bunch. I have a bunch. It's fine. Let's go. Okay, we just need to sort out our armor. Uh, now, these transportation boosts, right? If you look at these, their food consumption and stamina consumption rates are crazy it also means that we can't run very fast can't jump very high and, and everything basically all the stats become incredibly neutered but what happens is our carrying capacity is massive so if i try and now carry those energy regulators well i only need 840 so in theory i could actually ditch two of these for that's, that's 1300, maybe one of them will do? Yeah, 1000, so I could actually ditch them for jetpack and mobility boosters to counteract that transportation boost a little bit, and that's actually pretty good. Uh, as I ditch the rest of my inventory just so I can carry these guys. Alright, let's get this over to the trader dude, uh, along with the peppers as well. Cloud miner bridge, um, Jupiter, Bridge, peppers. Here we go. They got a really short perish time, so you really do have to transport them by uh, any refrigerated means, really. All right, let's start with the peppers and this fella here. The job. La 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 la. This is the first time I've heard about three peppers. He's all he wants to do. I managed to crack, crack down some peppers, have some vegetable soup. Thank you very much. Um, that's lovely. 40 grand, pretty much, and two vegetable soups with two peppers left over. Win. All right, so this guy then, you want the 400 regulators. So uh, I brought you the regulators. Basically, uh, 135,000 credits plus 300 rep. So that's a help. So we get two radiation shielding as well. And we can buy, oh, radiation shielding, reactor cores, mining equipment, 
Uh, advanced warp drive, advanced constructor, small upgrade kits. Yeah, the laser drills, drill modules, drill module SVs. And we can sell... Uh, we can't sell a huge amount, but I mean the flux kills are the best sellers there. Sathium, cobalt, aluminium powder, mechanical components, which I have tons of. Plastic shoes, which I have tons of. Um, and maintenance data, but only for a thousand, so probably better off selling that when we find a mission for it. But that is interesting. 108,000, we can buy a re reactor core, and then the mining equipment is interesting. Package the sealed case of standard equipment used by outlying colonies and mining rigs to extract resources from deep underground. Now, I've had missions where we've, or I, I've found traders where they've been asking for this mining equipment. I've never been able to find where to get this mining equipment from. So that is a speculate to accumulate right there. Um, let me connect to the Cloud Miner's large harvest container there. We'll put this stuff in here. 80,000. I don't know how big these things are, but uh, let's see what we got. Volume. Um, 80 liters so that's fine so let's see if we can buy 10 of them bingo I say 180 I'm gonna I'm gonna buy all I'm gonna buy them out I'll buy them out of all of them uh, we're definitely gonna need them I think or we will find somewhere to sell them so 500 grand call it 600 grand in total for 50 mining equipment and we've got two radiation shieldings there. I'm not sure what it takes to create a reactor, reactor fusion reactor itself, but uh, let's see if it needs any more help. Um, we're back on track with supplies. We can add a few other orders. We're still, if you can ha lend a hand. Uh, okay. The boys need a break. Uh, so 58 bottles of beer, 48 bottles of liquor, and five pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't bought any liquor. All right, anytime I've seen liquor, I've just ignored it because it's like, oh god, it was such a pain in the ass last season. 48 bottles of beer. I don't think I've got anywhere near any of that. So, wow. Call it 50 liquor, 50 beer, and some pizza. I mean, what a boss. What an absolute boss. All right, we got another server restart because that is how long it's been to get things going. Um, so, let's get back to the ship. Yeah, normally I would ignore a colonist blue moon structure. Last season they were they were nothing, but this season there seems to be a new trader in here. This guy um, seems to want to buy some some reports and stuff. He also sold me some hacking software. Bought a fortifier and two spam hacking softwares from him. Now he'll buy economic data at eight thousand, which I think is actually pretty good. For economic data being reasonably. Now, I've never managed to get a warp signature report, troop movement report, weapon signature report from anything, so... <laughs> um, now, you could hold on to this stuff and hope that you might find a trader um, mission that wants to buy them, but I'm going to go ahead and just sell them because I've just been collecting this data and not much has been going on. Um, and then this guy will buy from you um, energy regulators and computers at a reasonable price as well, although I think you can still do better at an advanced factory so yeah the blue moon uh a nothing poi that's actually now worth stopping by if you do find one all right let's get off this 3g planet shall we this is going to be a little bit strained on the old uh engines here what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to remove that waypoint i'm going to create a new one up in orbit just as ac say radiation shielding uh reactor cores and stuff like that so I know where to come and buy those things if I need to. At the moment, my uh, my height is not increasing at all. Can we have some vertical movement, please, game? There we go. I don't know why I'm holding space, but I have to let go and press it again for it to actually do something. Uh, top speed of 20 meters per second here. We boost. We can get it up a bit more, but I've got our generators are straining a bit. <laughs> Everything's fine. There we go. We're almost in orbit now. There's our boost spent, though. Back down to 90 seconds. We can make it. 3G's of gravity, baby. Jupiter. Still rocking it. Well, welcome to a T-type sun. This is... Uh, we're not actually in drone swarm territory yet, uh, but we're sort of on the edge of it. T-type suns, it would appear, still have an abundance of drone uh swarm activity these asteroid fields the all the orange ones are drone 
um, infested. So, a lot of these are undiscovered as well, which is great, which means they're going to be untouched. Blitz has uh, discovered that one, and that one's undiscovered as well. There are also four Type 2 exploration sites here. Um, yeah, and also there's um, volcanic moons, I think these are. Yep, volcanic moons, medium. And now that may... The, uh, the orbit is, is drone activity. The moon itself, I'm not sure. We'd have to go and have a look. Now, this is very dangerous for me because uh, this ship is equipped for anti-drone kind of stuff. Not not the, not the big ships, the little ones. <laughs> if I find a nullifier here, I'm going to have to leg it as quickly as I can. Let's have a look and see if the uh, the moon itself has at least got some drone stuff on it that we can maybe hit with the charger. Oh boy. That is... <laughs> it's a crap ton of activity that is. There's another fire. Oh my god, that is a lot of activity. Um... Small swarm, nullifiers, nests. Okay, let's see if we can get to this moon at least without um, attracting too much attention. Um, so the thing was trying to tell us a little bit about drone stuff, but my god. Living life right now. Uh, shields uh, are a maximum at 20,000. Weapon systems are all armed. But like I said, they're not particularly effective against big boats. I mean, they make an absolute mess of any of the little guys that come after us, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> let's try and get in and out of here. This is... Uh, I'm nervous, dudes. I'm nervous. Just got this ship. Do not want it scratched already. Okay, we got inbound. Inbound on the small little drones have got exclamation marks everywhere we've been detected but we are making very very good time towards the moon right now they are not going to catch us not in a million years we'll be fine nullifier inbound oh crap yeah we've been we've been made <laughs> they detected us the moon's very look at that moon there it's crazy it's like a freaking weird moldy meatball um yeah that nullifier has got has got uh the thing is with the little drones there i think they have processors in them on the can do as well so they're actually kind of worthwhile farming to a degree we're at the moon though everything's fine let's have a look at this place oh my god look at this place neo deposits and magnesium deposits but it doesn't look like any drone activity certainly not in a single ping at least anyway this is a medium moon so it's slightly bigger uh lots of magnesium iron neo Let's give that a little ping. I saw some purple somewhere. There we go, purple that way. Let's take, let's investigate that. Oh, now I'm nervous to go back into orbit. <laughs> oh my god! I don't want to. want to face that lot again. Oh boy! Right. So this moon is um, 0.56 g, which is a vacation for my thrusters uh, after a 3 g planet. Uh, so that's good. And it has magnesium, iron, uh, neo, and promethean on it. And we have a cluster of purples down here. Let's go and investigate that. We're right on top of these guys, and they will not... Oh, they're just lava tubes. Ah, oh, man. Lava tubes. Oh, man. They are all lava tubes, aren't they? Yeah. It's disappointing. There's a lot of neodymium deposits here, though. Um, there are any smalls mine, so eh. probably quicker to mine an asteroid if we find one. But it would be good to restock. You know, it's one of the lowest volume uh, materials we have. I suspect the other purples that I'm picking up over there are also lava tubes. Yeah. But I'll check them out. This is looking a, a rather uh, disappointing and unpopulated moon, unfortunately. Yeah, as expected, the uh, that moon was. Um, was just more lava tubes and nothing else really going on there. Um, so I've decided to come to another one. This is a methane moon. 
and uh, this might have a little bit more activity on it or it might be the same nevertheless space orbit around it and every orbit it would seem um, of every moon in this sector is absolutely teeming in drone swarms so uh, the opportunity for uh, loot here and obviously drone parts and stuff is extremely high but I'm gonna need some help yeah we've been made again drones inbound we're at 100 meters a second the Jupiter is much faster than the matter rest is um, so we should be able to outrun them still no nullifiers on scope yet uh, so I'm not too worried about what's here oh never mind there's a nullifier and is closing no I'm pulling away from him it's fine we'll get to the moon no problem there's a lot here dudes there's a lot here titanium and lots of pentaxid asteroids look at a big cluster of pentaxid asteroids down there that would be tasty oh christ we're gonna hit the ground <laughs> break break it <laughs> breaks for impact all right here we go Sathium silos promethean silos xerax stuff yeah a xerax what are they doing here nevertheless they're here they've got solar silos on the ground rados missile neo rados base you got unknown artifacts in a cluster over there bunch of silos looks like a drone base over there maybe with the shields up moon this won't take long to get around lots of xerax activity yep damn And Voidium. Wow. That was unexpected. Yeah, drone base there. Unknown artifacts down the left. Bunch of silos of various sorts. Refueling depots. Lots of juicy Xerox activity. Alright. And with a Neo. Uh, four and four Neo deposits. Medium this time much smaller moon so we could have some fun down here we've done the silos before um, there's, a, there's the waste treatment plant the nice big cluster of Xerox stuff right below us right now. The waste treatment plant, a Rados missile silo. Oh yes, I remember the Rados missile silo. Is that the same one? Is that the same one though? I can't really tell. The Merc is severe. Is that the same missile silo? I think it is. Look at it. Four walls, missiles on the uh, outer edges of it. Just about tell. Could be firing missiles at me any time now. Yep, there we go. Four missile launchers. Blub, 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 blub. 99, 98% shields, okay. So, sort of standard missile launchers, I think, that are not particularly effective against um, shields, which could be a perfect target for charger. Anyway, Gats. Go to town, boys. Oh, look. There's a Neo silo there, I didn't even see it. I just thought it was a bunch of drones. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think what we're going to do, I don't think we've got enough time left in today's episode, but it would be good at some point to take that again. It is a very good POI, definitely worth um, stopping by. It's got, uh, it's got some decent loot in it. It's got some decent loot in it, but it does require quite a bit of effort. Uh, what I think I'm going to need, though, uh, because we are here for drone processors and stuff, is uh, some extra firepower. So I'm going to see if I can hire some mercenaries to escort me around drone space for a bit and get some drone processors that way. For now, um, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you next time, assuming that I'm still alive next time.
I need to get out of here. But thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Until then, take care. Bye-bye.